Hi everyone, Phaedra from Noble Flowers. We are going to do a big farm tour today on our flower farm. We left our jobs about 18 months ago to flower farm and sell flowers full time and this is our third year growing flowers. So we're going to walk you through, give you a detailed tour, talk about each plant. Let's get into it. Here we are at our field. We've got three plots. We've got plot one, plot two and plot three up there where Moroni is. And our middle plot, plot number two, is the cool flowers plot. We'll start there. If you've been following along with us, you will know that we've had really bad weather, terrible flooding, and we lost most of our crops. So most of our cool flowers that we planted in autumn were either damaged or washed away or suffered just really bad weed pressure. I'll walk you through that. I'll walk you through what we've been working on in that plot. Then we'll get on to the other two plots. We've got, at the moment, eight rows in each plot. We are extending it. We've just got a little bit of work to do up the back. We've got some um, piles of concrete and dirt here. We need to get it removed. Uh, that third plot is being worked on now. But I'll go through each, each row. So row number one was Godisha. And we did get some of it. And I had tried a new variety. Uh, I had tried Rembrandt. Last season we had Sweet William in here and it's still sort of popping up from last season which is good and there's a tiny little bit of yarrow coming up and the Lux bars just self-seeded everywhere so of course you're going to see that everywhere. But what happened in this plot was we had so much rain everything out here just turned into a bog. We couldn't really even get out here to weed it was just the biggest mess and then of course the sun comes out and the weeds just absolutely took off and then it rained again. Nothing actually dried out between, it was about six weeks of just non-stop. Well, mostly rain with some sunshine in between. It was just a recipe for weeds. So this whole row of Godisha, we basically lost most of it. Um, I did harvest a little bit of it. I gave some bouquets to friends and that was about it. So what we're going to do with this row is just rip it out, get something else in. This is the Lux Bar and it went pretty good. It did suffer some weed pressure, as you can see. And we also had a lot of mint grow in, in amongst it. And if you've been following us for a little bit, you'll have realized that we do double plant our rows with companion, plant, uh, companion flowers sometimes. Uh, the mint was a total accident. We didn't know it was going to come up, but it's actually worked really well because the Lux Bar is so tall, it shaded the mint and it grew really nice long stems. Smells amazing. It has been gorgeous in bouquets. So it actually was a really happy sort of thing to happen. The mint also kept the other weeds at bay. So it worked out really nice. The Lux Bar has actually finished. Uh, well, it's still here. We just need to rip this row out as well, but I'm kind of come along and I'm gonna harvest all this Lux Bar that's left over because I'm drying the petals. So I will work on that and then that row will come out. This is an interesting row. This is Feverfew. But what it actually was, this was our Feverfew from last season. And what we did was in around, must have been around January last year, we cut it all to the ground and we just left it to see what would happen. And it has grown back because it is actually a perennial. It will keep coming back and it has. And what it did was these very long skinny stems i'll contrast that this is the fresh one from seed over here so it does look a bit different this is what the fever few looks like fresh from seed so it's bigger taller stronger plants with bushier sort of stems but this one works really well in bouquets too because it's just got those i often just want to add fever few in as a twinkle in a bouquet and I actually really liked this so we may even cut this back down to the ground again and see what it does in its third year what these plants do we just need to get, we'll harvest it when it's finished we'll cut it all back to, down to the ground weed it out and we're going to just see again what happens here so this was our kale row if you were watching along with our season uh, the the season kind of messed the kale up it was also our first time growing kale, so we were very inexperienced. We've since learnt some better techniques about how to get the really nice heads and the long stems. So we'll put it in again. But for now, this bed has sunflower seeds in it. 
This bed was our binoculars and we had a really beautiful crop and then the water just up the other end here just really bogged it down and we're not sure if these corms are okay. They're actually ready to be dug up now. But what actually happened was our nigella from last year all self-seeded and it grew up. So the ranunculus all flowered, beautiful, and then the nigella started coming up and it was just the most perfect timing because the as the ranunculus were dying off, the nigella was taking off and it just kind of shaded the ranunculus and they just kind of mixed see sort of mixed their seasons perfectly it was really nice so this was sort of like a a free crop for us we didn't do any work on it and the other really cool thing about how this worked out and we'll remember this for next season now we can interplant our ranunculus with nigella because they just have the most perfect timing um, it could have our weather at the moment could have really influence that as well we'll just see what happens next season um, but now that the nigella is finishing up I'll come through and harvest it the seed pods are about to all be developed I'll come through and harvest it and then it's time to dig up our ranunculus corms so then we'll have a free bed again so it really was the perfect mix of companion planting with that one we do have Queen Anne's lace which I don't grow anymore I don't plant seeds for it anymore because it's very very invasive and I don't want to have to deal with it getting into the neighbor's properties and then them asking us to control it. So we just don't want to risk it. But these ones have popped up as volunteers and then they're in the aisles, which isn't great, but we've left it because we'll use what's there. We won't let anything go to seed and we'll just make the most of it. Same with this one. Okay, so this row is the fever few that we planted from seed. This was the one, I think it went in in autumn so this is one of the cool flowers and surprisingly it hasn't actually flowered yet some have the one over the in plot three that went in after it has actually flowered sooner but i would say it's got to do with the fact that this got really flooded plot two got really flooded it sat underwater for a while okay now we've got of course you can see we've got lots of um queen anne's lace which is fine and it's beautiful look at this and there's some really pretty, this isn't a blush one, but there's some really pretty pale, is it going to focus? Blush ones, really pretty. They look nice, people love them. But what we've actually got here is we planted an entire row of Bells of Highland because I love it so much and it didn't come up. But of course then it did come up. We're about to plant something else in here and then the Bells of Highland take, took off. These bigger plants are ones that we transplanted from elsewhere. So that's why they're so big. And then we've got the littler plants down here. They are growing at different rates. I'd say it's just because of what happened and our soil really got depleted of nutrients with all the water as well. All right, next row. This was snapdragons, they're nearly finished. They've done a, well, they kind of did a bit of a second flush. Not an amazing second flush, but just some, well, it might actually be more like side shoots have sort of come up we're just in the process of cutting them all off back to the ground they actually did amazing with all the water they were so beautiful and fluffy i'll pop the variety up on the screen i did have other colors they didn't survive but these really pale i was going to say cream but they're really white they did amazing the other thing that did amazing is the sea holly now can you believe that and it's thrown up uh well it's grown so many little baby plants but look at this it is one of the most magical plants the only problem being it is so spiky people are really drawn to it and then they touch it and it really spikes them and then they don't buy it so while i feel like i want to grow a lot of it viability wise i'm not sure i don't want it is so much work growing flowers and trying to live off selling flowers we are really careful about what flowers we will put our time into and if they're not selling we won't we don't want to put the effort into them anymore um, i'll talk about that a bit later with some other flowers that 
we love, but they just don't sell very well. And unfortunately, Sea Holly is one of them. And while it is absolutely gorgeous, and yes, it looks amazing in a bright wedding bouquet or if someone goes for blues, so far I haven't had those colors requested. So, and the wedding I did last week, it just wasn't part of her color scheme. She had that really romantic pinks and, you know, the deep reds and things. It just would have thrown her palette off, so I couldn't use it but it's really pretty. So back behind here, this is just a temporary plot of chrysanthemum. For now, we're just happy to have armfuls of chrissies for Mother's Day. Fingers crossed, they, considering the weather, oops, excuse me, considering the trouble we've had with the weather, we really, really hope that they actually do flare in time now. Okay, let's go to plot three. So this row here is gyps uh, gypsophila baby's breath and our friend Ron who you've seen on the farm before he actually got them started for us um, he only did half a row though we needed another half a row of those uh, we've had so much trouble trying to grow gypsophila it just either doesn't like us or we're just terrible at it but now that he's got them started for us we're feeling a little bit more hopeful and they are looking really health healthy it, he got them to us kind of later than we hoped, but it ended up working out as a blessing because we had flooding go straight over that area of the garden and we would have lost them all. So it actually worked out. Some, some of the things that have happened that we thought were setting us back were actually blessings because we would have lost so many plants if we had have been able to get them in earlier. We've got the next succession of Feverfew. We're really trying to keep on top of that because it's our favorite filler flower. We've got some sunflowers in and I don't know what date they are. Moroni's got that all on a spreadsheet. These two rows of sunflowers, they went in two weeks apart, but they got very, I feel like they got very stunted. They kind of soldiers soldiered on through all of that rain and very cold weather there was no frost but it was really not very ideal conditions they sort of soldiered on through that and then they got flooded but we had trenched and so the water did run off in some spots in this patch though the water did pool still there was so much water and we are having trouble with an animal it's coming along and just biting, it's sort of like biting the stem sideways and knocking the tops off everything. This end of the row really got ruined. Whatever it was bit the top off everything and they're branching now. Same here, we've lost a lot of sunflowers to whatever this animal is. And I know some of you are thinking in the back of your minds or yelling at the TV, Phaedra, it's a deer and we've never seen deer on this property but they are in the area and it is possible and i don't actually know what it looks like when deer eat your plants never experienced it before so i don't actually know is that what it looks like when they do because i know they go for sunflowers because i've watched it happen to uh, nicole from flower hill farm and i'm trying to think who else has talked about the deer pressure Anyway, I'm curious what your thoughts on that are because I do have an inkling that we could have a problem, which is expensive fencing. Let me know. Lilies. They're very short because they got flooded. I think they've just struggled, but they are still long enough for me to use in roadside bouquets. And a lot of arrangements are still okay. They're nearly finished. I need to come out here. I've been picking every day because they just, you know, they'll look like, they seem to look like this today and then by tomorrow they're open. Well, they're not open. They're coloring up and I need to pick them. This one needs to be picked. It's going to blow right open today and then I'm going to have to cut that off and not use it. This one as well. So when you're picking your lilies, this is when I usually will come out and grab them. So they've got their color, but they haven't cracked open yet. Um, so yeah, they're nearly ready to come out. But what I want to show you is the glads. I love them so much. I love them so much. 
they are gorgeous and I've got some really beautiful varieties some of these are just mixed varieties but I also bought some of the Dame Edna ones and they are amazing they are so 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 pretty what's left here is actually already sold I'm going to come out later and pick them and um, delivering them on Friday which is tomorrow I can't even keep up with what day it is anymore but a lady um, stopped by roadside her father used to grow lots of glads she said that he had a tennis court that he converted into a garden and half was glads and the other half was a veggie patch so he had all of these glads and he's since passed away but his wife and this lady's mother's still alive and they want to give her a whole heap of glads for christmas and i think it's so beautiful so i'm um i'm picking the rest of them for them there's a couple of the day medden ones i'll keep she doesn't really want the small ones and they're a bit smaller because um, i bought some of the smaller variety glads she doesn't want those um, but i'm really happy someone's going to get so much enjoyment out of them because they're actually very hard to sell just to the average customer if they're going in an arrangement they look great um, i actually like them in a bouquet but people just don't go for them um, so next year i think i'm actually just going to lift the lift them up and put them in my house garden and just enjoy them put them along a fence line or something <sighs> But look at this, this has been eaten too. And I hadn't realized that yesterday and I'm not sure if it was even eaten yesterday. Something's coming in. Do you reckon it's a deer? I don't know what to look for for deer damage but I have never, ever, ever had glads eaten before, ever. So it's a bit, I mean, I'm, I don't even know what tracks to look for. <laughs> Do they leave marks when they eat things? Because there's no footprints. Oh, there's poo and that's rabbit poo. Surely not. A couple of random dahlias here. Maroon, I can't throw out dahlias. <laughs> we had hundreds of them. We sold a whole heap and of course we still had more left over. And I was just gonna compost it because I'm like at this point, <laughs> how, many, how many dahlias do we need? Um, I gave heaps to friends and I was just going to compost. He, co he couldn't. <laughs> he went and rescued them all and he's planted them everywhere, which I think is cute. It's going to be pretty when they come up. Um, I'm showing flies away. That's why I'm moving so much. Um, they're not that bad today, but they are a bit annoying. Okay, another roll of um, Chrissy's. These ones I had cut. I didn't cut them as low as I would normally, um, but I've got some side shoots coming up. These ones did pretty terrible. They got very flooded. The soil to begin with wasn't very good, wasn't very nutrient, very rocky. Uh, we put it in just to see what would happen and it's not a fail, but it's definitely not a win either. We sowed this nigella. The first year that we grow nigella, it's normally not as good as the second year when it drops its seed. So we'll let itself sow here for next season. And we do have some zinnias that have popped up by themselves but they're really not looking very quality, are they? So that finishes up plot two and three. We'll go to plot one. Uh, plot one, this got completely washed out. If you can remember all the soil come out, Marina, let's put it back in. We were going to have beautiful celosia for Valentine's, which people loved, but we can't get that in now. This row here we've got to come through. It's actually got ranunculus corms in it and it's kind of been overgrown with grass. We've got to be careful where we walk. We need to dig that all up, like fork it up, pull them out and then get this row ready for something else. Then I've got my two rows of Cosmos, which I love. And I had some other varieties to trial this year, but this is what I love. Do you see how the Cosmos is on each side and then the house is in the background? And I just love when it becomes a big forest and I love taking photos here. I've been cutting this back. Um, I've got a video about how I hedge. This is what I call it, the cosmos. Um, it just really bushes it up. I actually use it as foliage early in the season. I usually don't let any, we've got a rogue flower here. I usually don't let any flowers develop this early on. Um, well, in saying that, I wouldn't let any flowers develop in spring. We're nearly in mid-summer, but our weather is so all over the place. I haven't been as heavy hedging it 
this time around just because I do actually need some flowers. But once the temperature gets over about 33 degrees Celsius, I don't use these flowers in bouquets anymore. I wait, I just keep cutting it back using the foliage and then I let it take off again in autumn and then it just turns into a jungle, which I love. But yeah, I was gonna try some other varieties. This is just the sensation mix. But just with what happened and missing the season, I, I never got a chance to do it, which is a bit unfortunate. And we've got some yarrow over here, which does need netting and we never netted it. A lot of things just went to the wayside. We've just been so pumped for time. Um, it's really pretty, but it's really got to be well developed before you pick it or it's going to wilt. So just watch that when you're picking it. It's pretty. It dries. It holds its color. It's a nice little extra thing in bouquets. No, but I never have a customer point that out and love it, but it just it adds an extra something. Okay, moving along. This next row, we've got status. So we've got the iceberg. It has struggled a little bit. And then we've got some gomfrina, the strawberry gomfrina. I'll just show you the status. We have to get in here and weed this. This is actually an edible weed. I might do a video on edible weeds at some point because we actually use them. Morona makes a beautiful tar taco, vegan taco filling with this. It is, um, it is so beautiful, it's purslane. But there must be something about purslane that inhibits the growth of the plants around it because our flowers will not take off like they should when there's purslane in the bed. So we usually really try hard to keep that out, but that's what's going on here. And then we've got Gomfrina, the strawberry one, which we had in time to have something for Valentine's Day, but it just hasn't come up. So not looking good there, is it? The next three rows are dahlias. And it took us months to actually finally get them in. I'm just gonna stand in the shade for a little bit. It took us months to get these in. They're so behind. This time last year we had dahlias for Christmas or we're starting to get flowers, but not this year. We've got the tiniest little plants. I've got them in, I've pinched most of them. Um, sometimes I haven't pinched them. I've just left them and then done a deep cut, but it's been so wet this season. I didn't want to do that. So I am pinching them and I'll talk you through what we've got. I'm still very hopeful we're gonna have a nice dahlia season. It'll just won't have started as early as it would have otherwise. I've planted in this row the varieties that I love the most for work with bouquets. And it's pretty much all the ball dahlias because they are just the best of ours life. The red ball medium, no idea what variety that was. That's just now what it's called because I don't have a name for it. Um, they're growing really nicely. The one called First Prize, beautiful. I love it. It's got beautiful tones to it. We've got a Hot Shot, which is red. Uh, Trevelyan Pride is really nice, but I've only got one that survived. And Seagull, looks like I've got one Seagull as well. We'll go along this road now. Um, Drachenberg is really, really nice. I only put in four or five plants this year. It has a lot of impact in the bouquet. Um, Bre Brennan Palomino, it's okay. I've put them in, some of these I've put in this row because I didn't have many tubers and I wanted to just use them for another season just to see how much I love them. As beautiful as dahlias are, for a florist, they don't have the best vase life. They're beautiful, but they don't last very long. And that's something that our customers really value, that our bouquets last a long time. So I'm really culling the dahlias down to varieties that have an excellent vase life and perform really well. So in the end, that's what I'll grow here. And then I'll probably each season have a test plot of um, maybe new ones that I've purchased to test them out and see what I think. So that's what's going on here. That first row I just showed you with the hot shot and the red ball medium, they're all ones I'm keeping. This next row that I'm working on now, I like them, but I wanna work with them another season to check how much I like them. 
Yep, so cliff salmon, it's a pretty one. This is a Bunnings special. <laughs> Bunnings is our hardware store over in here, here in Australia, the really big one. I guess it's like Lowe's. That's a paddy melon, I need to rip those out. Venetian's really pretty, but I just want to work with it another time and just see if I want to keep it. Wendy's place was pretty nice. Uh, Lanny's Joy I liked. So this is just a few plants of a Sahara that didn't really flower very well last year. We're going to see what happens. And same with evening mist. We're just going to, this is the row that we're going to decide what stays and what goes. Same with this row. Um, I've lost my label here. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's Travel and Pride. Maybe we're looking this way. So Travel and Pride. Um, Nail was, it's a very small dahlia. So I'm not too sure I want to grow it. Same with Mexico. I've got it there because, you know, half the family's Mexican, so. But it really is too small and it doesn't have a very long vase life. Um, I'm pretty sure Wendy A was the same. And then the rest of these were part of a box that a friend sent me. They're all unnamed and I did not tag the ones that I really wanted. And there's a really huge, beautiful dinner plate one that I'm really hoping I've got in there because that's the one I'm trying to catch for next season. So that's the flower field. We're feeling a little bit more on top of things. We never actually feel like we're ahead, <laughs> but we do feel a bit better about it. Hello. Hello. What are you doing? Uh, just wasting time. Huh. We always feel like we wish we could do more. Yeah. We'd like to have an employee by now, but it just hasn't happened. Working on it. We can enslave, enslave the kids. We tried, but they don't, <laughs> they don't want to. They speak up. <laughs> so we're heading over to this patch now, which just has a few bits and pieces in it, but mainly it's got my veggies. So I'll show you what plants I've got in here, and then I'll show you the veggie patches for those who are interested. Okay, so I've got this whole row. Every Where every stake is, is a dahlia, and they're all avalanche so they're this big white fluffy head and I just love them and I think it's going to look amazing having a whole row of them here so that's really just for my pleasure and because dahlias are edible they made it into the edible patch and I've got fever few around these dahlias obviously need to get in here and weed uh, Moroni has weeded up this end so we're working on it um, next row I've got matricaria and some of the new dahlias that I bought, we've got sand dune, red alert, which is really struggling, and Otway gem, and I've got field of, not a field, like a section of corn, and I'm about to put some more seed in to get another succession in. Then another dahlia, little angel, melancholy which didn't come up so that's a bit of a shame and then I've got cornflakes which I'm looking forward to because I've wanted that one for a while and then more matricaria so under planting with matricaria soil just doesn't like to be naked and in our area when the soil is naked it will grow weeds guaranteed we have a huge weed problem so my thoughts are fill it up with things that are nice and we can use them. And it does cut down the pressure of the weeds a little bit. And fever few and dahlias grow pretty nice together. So it's working well. Strawberries, we have picked buckets of strawberries from these. this row, there's 12 meters and they are beautiful. Really good, but I have to net it, all the birds get it. Here you can see, and it's coming up, that's Cosmos. It is bright lights. And the reason it's in this garden, which is the edible garden, is because it's edible. The Bright Lights Cosmos variety is actually edible. So I cannot wait for that. And then I've got a few little lavender plants, uh, the culinary lavender. There's one there, one in the back here, and I've got a couple over in my other veggie patch. So then I've got my raspberries. And this is a, these are ones I put in last year or the year before. I did have a whole row and Unfortunately, somebody who came to help us weeded the wrong row and weeded all the raspberries out and did such a good job that they never came back. I don't even know how you can weed that good because raspberries are very hard to get rid of. So I had to replant them all again. 
but these are doing amazing. The weather has stuffed them up a bit. They've been going red, but very hard. They're not ripening properly. I'm hoping now that the weather's starting to warm up, we might actually get something off them. And then this section is uh, the section I've started this season. They're all Aubrey Bliss variety. That's the one I like the most. And this will bush up by next season. I will have moved some more canes over and it should look like this. So then I'll have, uh, what will I have? Like eight meters of raspberries, which will be beautiful. They don't grow up this end very well because it gets a little bit too much morning shade. They don't get enough sun. I wanted to show you something really exciting. Last week I, well, two weeks, for the last two videos, you've seen me use smoke bush, which is just the most gorgeous, fluffy um, tree that grows with these like ethereal branches that kind of drape in the wind. And I used it for the wedding last week, but let me show you something so cool. We have this tree, this bush, gives me the worst hay fever. It's, we don't really like it, it's green. That's about all it's got going for it. It's not good as foliage because the branches don't grow in a way that's useful, but we've started cutting it away. When I say we, I mean Moro and I. And there's a smoke bush in here, look at it. We are so excited. Like, so it is amazing to find these sorts of things in your garden. And there's another little one down there, which we're hoping might take off. Now it's going to get some sun. But what a treasure to find that in here. Almost as exciting as the time we cut out a heap of shrubs and discovered a sequoia, one of the red wood, redwoods. You know, those Californian redwoods. If you're in the US, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And we found one of those in there and I just couldn't believe it. So finding this smoke bush is just so exciting. Okay, for those interested, here's my veggie patch. But I'll give you a walkthrough because I know a lot of you are growing food as well. And I always grew food, even when I was younger. I had a little veggie patch up the back. Um, maybe I was like 10 or something. So I've always loved it. I've always loved gardens. That's why I love this so much. We love growing plants. Um, and I really feel it's important, well, we feel like it's important now to have as much of your own food as possible because there's uh, more and more problems popping up with the food chain. And even recently, the baby spinach at the shops got contaminated with a weed and it was making people very sick. So, you know, and we've had other problems in Australia with um, food chain problems. So yeah, we, I mean, we really want to try and focus more on our veggie patch now that we're feeling a little bit more on top of the flowers. And when I say that, it's only because this is our third year, you know, it's just that natural progression. You get better at, better at it. You have more of an idea of what you're doing. When you first start flower farming, it is just so overwhelming. There's so much information and so much you don't know. It's really daunting to get started. I'm sorry about the wind. Anyways, enough rambling. I'm gonna show you what we got. We've got blueberries here, but they've got no, obviously got no fruit on them. Um, but what I did see was, well, what I heard, I was listening to a podcast that blueberry foliage is really sought after. And I was thinking we can grow the foliage really easy here. And it might be easier than trying, like maybe we should put some rows of blueberries in for the foliage rather than trying to get the berries because it's so much work amending the soil here to get a low enough ph for it to want to grow anyway some carrots but i had to weed and most of them came out it was just too hard to weed around them i've put some new vines in and i've covered them so that whatever's eating everything doesn't eat them um some more color cu culinary lavender I think it's really pretty. I need to pick this and just dry it so that I can actually enjoy that because I've got a nice recipe for um, a lavender smoothie. How beautiful does that sound? Parsley, sage. And normally I would not let it go to seed. I would normally cut any emerging seed heads off, but I just didn't get onto it. We've had a little crop of um, snow peas and I did have all these pods on this side I told everyone in the family, don't pick the pods on this side because I'm saving them for seed. But I'm noticing they're all gone. So there's one there. <laughs> so the kids either ate them or something ate them. 
it's been a challenging year with things eating things. Uh, these are just cucumbers down here. Having lots of trouble growing a lot of things at the moment. This is lettuce and I've let some go to seed. So I'll save those seed pods um, time. Got some dill here, but the seedlings got really kind of old. So I'm gonna sprinkle some seeds around there as well. We've got some dahlias. I just put some little short ones in. They actually were long enough and I was using them in bouquets, like big red ones, but I've cut them right back. So they'll have to come back again now. Chives, which we love. I eat a lot of chives and we're, I've left the seed heads on there this time because I'm going to collect the seeds. I just need it to dry out and it rained on them. They probably would have been ready to harvest the other day if I had of. Another blueberry. Uh, just another vine. I did have more lettuces in here. They got eaten. So I've just put new compost on top of them. They'll just com compost down. Another really big sage bush. Um, I could save some of this seed, but it's just kind of self-seeded at this point. Oh, I've got a bit of a nasty bug on that. Do I need to come out and sort those out? We won't use any chemicals. So when I say I'm sorting out bugs, I'm picking them off by hand. Those ones you can spray with a weak solution of dishwashing liquid in water if you want to put that. Um, a couple of my nice big trees over there get absolutely covered in them. It's the only way to get rid of them. So I do spray those trees with the diluted dishwashing liquid in water and it just, it gets rid of them. Um, but I didn't realize they were on the veggie patch. These little plants are called corn salad. And I guess they're almost a little bit like baby spinach with a slightly different taste. They're kind of... They kind of have a softer texture, like almost like a creamy, I mean, they're not creamy, but the texture feels creamier than baby spinach. It's not crispy, crunchy, and it's a little bit more bitter than baby spinach. And it has like a, I can't describe the taste, like a snow pea taste, if that makes sense. I like it. I think it's nice. They got a bit stunted though. Everything got stunted. One tiny little zucchini that's been in there for weeks and only just getting a flower on it. It got really stunted with the cold weather. Not sure what's gonna happen with that, but I've got new ones put in. Lemon balm and it makes nice tea because I love herbal teas. So I do need to cut that back a bit. It's getting a bit big. Another lavender. Uh, this one I just had to move because I needed to move it from where it was and I had to plonk it somewhere, so I did. My tomatoes, they got so stunted. They. I, a couple of weeks ago, once the rain actually stopped, I did look at them and wonder if I should start again, but it looks like I might just pull some of these lower leaves off and clean them up a little bit. And I've got to tie them up, just support them a bit so they don't have to work so hard. And this was a different variety. These are all Romas. This was a was it a like an alpine something they were supposed to fruit much earlier when the weather was cool but i think we just had so much wet and cold it, it has just made everything really struggle i had a beautiful apricot tree in there and it died it's the second one i've lost i would love to have an apricot tree i had one as a kid growing up but i spoke with a nursery and they did say it's very difficult in this area to get them to grow um, in the winter, they get way too cold and we do get colder here because we're sort of down in that valley and the snow air comes down at night. Um, so I just don't think I'm going to be able to do it. I put them in a pot this time because I thought I can then move the pot under the veranda in the winter, but I've lost it again. So I'm, I don't think I'll, I might try one more time, but I'm starting to spend a lot of money on apricot trees because they're $60 each for the little tree. So I don't know. In its spot now, I've got spearmint and I only just put this in yesterday. So it's very small and I'll have to really keep the water up to that. Um, the little, uh, the little yellow squash, the birds have been on that though. Uh, they got kind of stunted by all the bad weather and these ones got absolutely eaten by something and i need to come out at night and collect snails because i'm sure they're getting on them too um here's some new stuff i've put in i've got marigolds all through in here and just some vines so i've got um i think i put queensland blue pumpkins in because i 
I'm trying, I've been trying for years to find the variety that's going to want to grow over that. And I'm hopeful that the Queensland Blue is going to want to do that. And I've got some cucumbers here. I think they're just the Lebanese. Oh no, they're the apple, crystal apple. And these are the Lebanese over here. So I've protected some just in case. So that's my veggie patch. And it looks really cute. Look at it. Can you imagine it? And in the afternoon when the sun's setting, it's going to be such a pretty place. The other thing is I've got lots of rose bushes. I'm going to just put them along the fence lines. I was trying to think where to put my roses and I thought that was a cute idea. They're kind of away because they're so spiky. The kids aren't going to get hurt. Um, but I can still look at them and it'll be so pretty to have roses on the fence line. This is my little house herb garden. I've got to trim this rosemary again. I try and keep it into a nice tight ball. Uh, my mint, it's too hot for it here. I need to move it. This is just a jumbled mess. It's got parsley, the flat leaf parsley. Um, I probably need to do something with that. Chives, thyme. This is oregano. I need to cut it back a little bit. And we had some more here, but it's gone to seed. Then I've got weeds, dandelions, they're edible though. This is why I need to do a video on edible weeds, edible weeds and their uses because um, we'll use the dandelion greens and you can use the root in a tea. Anyway, they're really good. So then I've got some chocolate mint. I don't know if this is the one. No, that's just mint. This one must be the chocolate mint. Yep, and it smells beautiful and I love it. It's gonna be nice in a tea. Um, sage, a bay tree, which the topiary is suffering because I let it, but I probably need to just cut it off and let it bush up and let it turn into a bush. Um, the topiary was really, really hard to manage and it just kept getting sort of bug pressure. It just didn't do well. I've had it for years trying to baby it. We've got eucalyptus here, I've got to get that in. Some woolly bush, a snowball bush, my geranium, ah, oh, geraniums, my nasturtiums, and there's this really cute recipe, because these are edible, um, that you put goat's cheese or um, cottage cheese or something in here mixed with herbs and you roll it up like a, you know, like a sushi roll and you eat it like a little nice healthy treat. They are so gorgeous. I love them. Look at their cute little faces. And this is, if you remember a few videos ago, I started the cuttings of the lilacs. Um, so I did 27 of them. And as you can see, some are looking pretty sad, but we've got some others that are doing something and I may get something. Like this one's obviously going okay. This one was, it struggled backwards and forwards. This one was, it died. Same with this one, like it is been very tricky. It's looking like if that one survives, I'll get one. And these may not be developing roots. They may just be throwing up leaves, which sometimes happens. So I really hope, hopey, hopey, hope. The last thing I want to show you is my little patch of Cosmos in front of the studio. And it's coming along really nice. And I've been, cutting it off for foliage but I'll let it go to flower soon I think and here it is and I if you remember back I planted potatoes in amongst it they're getting their flowers so they're doing well I'm just trying to improve the soil here a little bit because uh, it wasn't very good um got a bud here it's getting there they'll actually be ready to pick soon I've got another snowball bush here. It's really struggling. I may have to move that and um, give up on it being there because I think I'm going to lose it. So we'll leave it there. I could just walk you around showing you plants all day. Thank you so much for being here again. Thank you for watching along. Um, thank you to those who are buying me a coffee. I've eaten a lot of chocolate. I think I better switch it to something else now <laughs> and stop eating chocolate. Of course, I'll wait till after Christmas. Um, but thank you so much. That's very kind of you all. Thank you for your beautiful comments and your warm wishes. I feel like this community we have here is just so kind. And I do see, um, I know you're nice people because I see your comments on other flower farmers videos too. And I just think 
they really do support this uh, thing that we're all trying to do, us flower farmers. There's not many of us really, especially not on YouTube. And it is hard <laughs> to make, you're so busy and you're trying to make videos, but I really love it. I love doing YouTube. I'm gonna do a video about, um, I've got a hundred videos now on YouTube. I'm gonna do a video about what I've learnt. So it'll be a bit different to what you're used to if you're only here for flower farming, but it'll give you a bit of insight to the back end of um, YouTubing this experience. So thank you, I love you all. And I'm wishing you all a very Merry Christmas. This will come out on Christmas Eve in Australia. It'll come out on, we call it Christmas Adam, just our family, just to be funny, but it'll come out on Christmas Adam in the US and in the northern parts of the hemisphere. So hope you have a wonderful time and I will talk to you soon. Bye.